friends! Welcome to episode 120 of Storyteller Conclave. This is a show all about helping you run the best tabletop role-playing game that you can. Whether you're a new storyteller or dungeon master learning the craft or an experienced storyteller looking to take your game to the next level. I'm Sarah. And I'm sneezing. You're sneezing. How are you? <laughs> I'm I'm Rob, and I am... I don't know where that sneeze came from. Oh, how bolt, are you? Bolt out of the blue. Uh, I'm doing very good, actually. I'm yeah, you've, you've been talking... Pokemon pretty much since you got here. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I've been on a huge Pokemon kick uh, lately. Well, I mean, you um, had a pretty good. Y- your standard Pokemon night went apparently very well. Yeah. So my my, my best friend and I have a uh, a Tuesday night Pokemon game that we do. Um, and basically we get on Discord together. Um, because uh, he lives out in like Jackson or something like that. And of course the the whole pandemic thing happened. So, right. Right. You know, in person meetups weren't weren't really a thing. But uh, he was a huge a huge Pokemon fan himself. Um, I I have always liked the franchise um mm-hmm. kind of from afar but sure. like never really got into it never really played much yeah, of the games. yeah 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 i kind of got halfway through pokemon red like the very first one right, right. a while back but eh, just kind of lost interest in it and d- was doing other things um but uh we decided that we wanted to you know spend some time together so mm-hmm. um find, we, find a common game find a common game well d- just do something anything right, right, to right. hang out uh we were watching like jojo's bizarre adventure together I remember you talking about we were, that. We were getting on um, uh, on Discord, and then one of us would stream, and we'd have a watch party. Um, and then I, I thought to myself, like, hey, wouldn't it be cool, like, if we played Pokemon together? You know, like, I said, if you played through Pokemon, and I could just watch, and, you know, we'd be rowdy about it, you mm-hmm. know? Um and then he came up with the idea that um, we both play and mm-hmm. we alternate nights. Nice, nice. Uh, I was he was playing Pokemon Red, so like the Gen One old Game yeah, Boy, yeah, yeah. you know, black and white Game Boy version of it. Right. And I was playing the Generation Three co- f- Game Boy Color remake of it. Nice. Uh, Fire Red, and then we just kind of went from there. And uh, so we're now on Generation Two slash Four. Right. I'm right. using the, the Nintendo DS uh, remake. We're doing this through through like an emulator. Um, but our Pokemon nights have gone really well, and we're really rowdy about it. That's awesome. We're getting one of our other friends involved, Very uh, cool. so hopefully she'll join in. And uh, yeah, just I, I love I love the hell out of my Pokemon team. Like, well, good for you. Do, I mean, I, you seem to be like very raring about it, and like I can enjoy your enthusiasm. Yeah, I yeah, was yeah, never yeah. a Pokemon person, but I I understand. Well, you played like, a little bit of Pokemon Go with your with, yeah, your, with, with Vicky. I really don't count that as much of anything well, as far as understanding the universe or anything about it no but at least when i say like you know it's a it's a hair cross it's that it's that that big oh, okay. uh, that, that big uh hercules beetle looking thing yeah okay and you're like okay. oh yeah, yeah, I, yeah i've got one of those you yeah know? yeah i i remember collecting one of those at some point and then yeah. i've gone to a couple of the pokemon go events to kind of get a feel mm-hmm. for those people and, and you know a little bit about typing and stuff like that so if i say yeah. like f- fighting is good against psychic so mm-hmm. my hair cross punched to punch the, the the drowsy in the face and yeah. killed him you know that was I mean, that all checks the box. You understand yeah. what's going on. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah. You know? But uh, but that's that's I don't know. That's, that's my my enthusiastic push right now. Yep. Uh, that that and Savage Worlds is still you know raring to go mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm. Um, if uh, if you've been looking at my personal Instagram, um, I'm building that beast of a terrain are... table already. Yes. Um, so I can I can maybe post some pictures up on the up on the, the no. I think Discord I think you should that. do some follow ups there. I think it'll. I think it'll be good. Some just some work in progress picks. Um, mm-hmm. I'm taking those as we go. So maybe we can post it up on the Patreon, kind of like you did for your. Uh... No, I think the, I think the progress would be great on Patreon because then people can see how you layered the construction. Yeah. Uh, especially when you start getting from the foam fact into moving that into ceiling painting and making it work. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, you absolutely. do have quite a bit to go, and you're doing mixed media. You're doing foam. You're doing some. Of the hearse molds, you're doing some other pieces. Uh, the, the 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 trick is textured wallpaper. Yeah. Uh, that looks like tiny little cobblestones. I think that's fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, because because you don't have to get the glass rollers that cost like a hundred and ten dollars to make impressions on your foam. I mean, not that I don't want to buy those. Right. No. No. <laughs> don't get I get me you. Wrong, but I mean, but you're right. But, but you're it's, right. It's the whole. Uh, it, what's interesting is uh, even in following some of the people online who are like who have all of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was one guy in particular who was just like, "I don't own these." But one of my flatmates does, and we're all artists, so I borrowed them from him. I'm going to show you why I didn't have to do that and why I did have to do that. Mm-hmm. And so he showed both methods. He's like, I'm not saying that this textured wallpaper doesn't solve the same problem. What I am saying is, is that when I press it across this, I get these kind of divots. And if I really want to make it look awesome, I'll use that roller. Yeah. 
But if I didn't have the right foam and I wasn't going to spend 1,700 hours making this, you know, this would work just fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think that's fantastic. Yeah, look, there's, there's no such thing. It's one thing I, I learned very early on is that there's no such thing as cheating in art. No. You know, if you can get the effect you're looking for, then congrats. You, you've done it right. You right, know? right. So. So. Uh, let's see here. Tonight. Tonight, yeah. I'm I'm going to disclaim and say that we are not going to try and make this a rant fest, but Sarah, you're going to... Okay, so I think we need to talk a little bit about how this, this episode came about so that everybody understands. And yeah. also, before we go any further, uh, I left my phone in the other room, Oh, so I need you to keep an eye on Discord for I will me. keep an eye on Discord. All right. Nox is totally here, so... Oh, hi, Nox! <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, uh, and, and so far it's been going back and forth, so it's been good. It's been good. Uh, so anyways, um, yeah, so how this, how this, this episode came about was... Um, Rob and I were talking storyteller stuff, like we like we do, mm-hmm. you know, and just, uh, I mean, legitimately talking, like, storyteller stuff, not <laughs> podcast stuff necessarily, but just, you know, how a game went or how a certain, you know, just bantering between between two storytellers. Yeah. And uh, I, I was like, oh, I need I need to say something. I need to get something off my chest. And he's mm-hmm. like, okay, go ahead. I, I, a, I feel this. This is a safe space. Yeah, always a safe space. I, I went, all right, why the heck do players... Do this thing. Mm -hmm. And I just started going off and Rob was like, okay, two things. I agree. And this needs to be a show. (laughs) Correct. So Rob is going to sit here and try to pad this like this isn't a rant, but this is absolutely a rant. And I need everyone to understand that this is a rant. I need you to understand that this is a couple of storytellers getting some stuff off of our chests. Hopefully other storytellers who listen to this show will feel a sense of catharsis through us <laughs> because I don't think any of the things that we're about to rant about are uncommon. No, no, definitely not. And uh, I, I would also, of course, you know, just like to be like, like, I don't have beef with anybody. No. So if if you are sitting there on the other side of this, listening to this going, oh, am, am, am I the person that she's talking about? M- maybe, but I don't care. Like no. I, I it, like I don't have beef with anybody. There's there's no this is not pointed at anyone. We do not I do not have anything to resolve with anybody over this thing. This is not unaired dirty laundry. This is just things that over twenty five years of storytelling have built up. Yeah, I, I think that's a great way of putting it. I mean, I'm I'm gonna flat out say that I'll be bringing up stuff that has happened in games that have that I've witnessed in games that. Um, that bother me. Yeah. Um, yeah. But these are players that I still play with that I will always play with. Th- these are things I have gotten over and sometimes I've already discussed with people, mm-hmm. but there are things that need to come up that people need to understand that even the best games with the best groups that have been together and know each other well, there you still have the basic stuff. Stuff happens. Stuff happens. Yeah. We're, still... we're all adults. Yeah. And... I mean, we, we try to be. <laughs> Well, yeah, I know, but, but I'm, I think I'm, that's uh, part of the problem. I, I guess where I'm going is we're all human, you know, yes. and just because we're we've we've been playing a lot of tabletop role playing games doesn't mean that we still don't have like very human flaws. Yes, that crop up, and yeah. I'm sure as a storyteller, I'm I'm going to be ranting about. We are going to be ranting about players today, but, but we are we are going to protect the innocent and not use names. I will never use a name. Uh, but at the same time, I'm sure, I'm sure I do plenty of things that annoy the crap out of let, some let us, people. So. Let us make the effort. We will use the pronoun they, regardless of who it is. Yeah. yeah so no, that no, way no. it's, we're protecting the innocent. I we're not throwing special names at it or something like that. I, I never, never try to name names unless I know it's a good flattering thing. So. Correct. Correct. So we, I, I tried to at least put some of this in, in block order so we weren't just randomly ranting through this entire thing. Yeah, we, we've got some bullet points. So, so players. We're, we're, players. <laughs> this goes out to you. This is for all the players. <laughs> <sighs> players. Why? <laughs> players, can we talk about tardiness? Yeah. Can we talk about attendance? I know yeah. this is not school. No. This is not this is not for college credit. No. But like why 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 can't we just show up? Why can't we just be on time? I don't think I've ever had anybody like no show on me. I've had no shows. Like I've had no not, shows. Not not without not without any sort of communication or prior knowledge. Like there, I, there was I've never had, a moment where I've had no shows, no note. 
where I didn't get information until uh, sometime after, like like almost a day after. Was there a dead family member or something? No. Or just... nope. They slept. They fell asleep. And apparently they fell asleep for like 48 hours because they didn't message me till the next day to not quite apologize. Oh, my God. But they simply said like, oh, yeah, I fell asleep and I didn't wake up. Uh, and and uh, when I looked at the clock, I didn't know what day it was. Uh, so, yeah, that's on me. And that was the end of it. I... Just, uh... Now, I'm adult enough to accept that, like, I still ran the game, but, like, Uh I held out that game sending messages for probably the better part of 45 minutes. Yeah. And then... Wondering what was going on with it. Because they're they're friends. These are people who are at our table. We treat them as friends. We treat them more so as friends in a more collective group than most. So to have something be like that where you've invested time together, you've made a commitment like this, and then that happens, you're like, what the hell? And then when it's... I guess brushed off in such a light way. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I found out reasons why it happened later, but it was still the event that occurred. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. it was like, <sighs> so. Uh, no, I've I've definitely had plenty of players who are very late. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I uh, no, I am I am not one known for my for my punctuality. Uh, everyone just kind of knows to add fifteen minutes to whatever you know. I've I've outright had my sister tell me, um, oh yeah, the the, I I know the event's not starting until four, but I told you three thirty so that you would show up on time. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> you know, oh okay, that's fair. I'll own that one. But like f- fifteen minutes, I'm not gonna get tilted about. But like two hours, yeah, two hours, yeah. I mean, you you did tell me you had a prior engagement that day, but that's kind of another issue. Mm-hmm. Given what this particular engagement was, I can forgive it because I understand how difficult that engagement was to to make in the first right. place. It was a it was a hard thing to schedule in the first place. But regardless, it's more than just the storyteller; it's everyone else waiting around. Yeah, yeah, and that's and that's the big thing. It's like it's for for me. It's you've got to be respectful of everybody else's time. Every mm-hmm. like four other five other people have cleared their schedule for this day mm-hmm. to make sure that they can make it here on mm-hmm. time, and then several times i've heard a couple of people that you and i both collectively mm-hmm. know say oh i've got this other thing going on that day so i'm just go ahead and start without me is the other that that's the part that gets me is the go ahead and start without me like you're not an integral part of this story like in, in it, or the other one that gets me is the go ahead without me i may not be there mm-hmm. but if i do great and you're like as a storyteller, you're like, okay, do I factor like you're going to be here or like I'm not going to be here? And I think for some systems that works. Mm-hmm. But for tactical games, it's kind of hard. Well, I always find like, I mean, one of our jobs as a storyteller is to integrate our players into our stories. Right. You know, and so just omitting someone, a whole a whole character from your story for an indeterminate section is very difficult to do at least for me yeah. um and also then you've got the weird thing of like okay well the while you were gone the whole party trekked out into the middle of nowhere right. how am i accounting for your absence are you there am i puppeteering you right are it what happens if you get killed or something right you know and you're not responsible for any of your own decisions at this point and 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 as a storyteller i've puppeted players because i've wanted to include them but left them in a state where they're inconsequential mm-hmm you know, I, I've been able to do that in some cases, but I still feel that it, it, it detracts. Yeah. And and also, um, what, like, I may not be there, just go on without me? I mean, I, I understand where that comes from. And I think that's why I forgive it, is because I know some people have other obligations. They're not going to put that burden on me, what those things are. I mean, I can I can understand, like, maybe if you're, like, unavoidably on call at work or something like that. Right. Like, and I, I get that. Right, right. I get that. Um, What... The the thing that gets me is like I I've double booked because mm. I said oh, I, t- I I told a friend I'm helping them move even though I know uh, I knew a month ago that our game night was going to be tonight yeah and told them that you know it's so so I'm double booked and I don't know how long that thing's going to take so just you know go ahead and start without me go ahead and start without me I may not even show up if it, if it runs too late like okay but again we 
four other people moved their schedules to be here a month ago. You know, yeah. like yeah, yeah. The one that that always gets me, and actually I put this love later because uh, I really find it more of an attitude is when those particular people mm-hmm. ask you to reschedule because they can't make it. Mm-hmm. Like I wouldn't say the last minute, but near the last minute. Yeah, and yeah. you're like, excuse me, what? Like. I got five other people three weeks ago, including you, to make this date. And now two days out, you're like, can I reschedule? And then you're getting indignant at me with when I, when I say no. Right, right. Like, we're we're a bunch of adults with, with lives and busy things going on and things that take up our weekends. Like, that's why we schedule a month out and only play once a month. Like, we're not a weekly game. Yeah. You know? I mean, and even if it is a weekly game, it's still something you're committing to. Mm-hmm. I mean... Unless it's pretty open that whoever shows up shows up, and that's the light level, which I know some storytellers do. Yeah, it's like yeah. whoever shows up is what we're playing. We play week to week. Whoever shows up is there. If you're if you don't show up, your character either doesn't wake up or doesn't make the adventure, and that's it. But like neither of us play that way. No, and and it, and that's and that's well known. And and yeah. none of our none of our players should. Expect I mean, that here's my favorite. What if somebody didn't show up to critical role? Right. How would you feel Laura, as a Laura viewer? Bailey's just like, yeah, I'm not going to be there tonight. No, and they don't announce it. Uh huh. Like literally, Matt sits down at the table, looks at his phone, and goes, "Oh, Laura's not. Laura's not going to be here. All right, guys, let's keep going." And like, everybody at the table would be like, "Excuse me." Yeah, she, apparently she had some other engagement. Yeah. H- how would you feel as a viewer? <laughs> <laughs> I've I've seen that woman duck out on an award show twice. She was twice. Yeah, that she was going to go win an award at. Yeah. But saw that Sam Regal was using her dice, so she had to go. <laughs> <laughs> Dressed to the nines, showing up at her game. That was That's, amazing. That was amazing. It was. What, what I, I, I caught that at absolute least. Absolute goddess. So, so I think that kills the tardiness. I, I that, can't. But but it doesn't kill the rants. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. No. The, the, the rant. The rant lives on. And. I think this is this is actually the rant that got this that got this whole topic brought up in the first place. Uh, this is this is the one where you looked at and went and went. Okay, this has got to be a show, but keep going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Players, why <sighs> why are you coming to game unprepared? Yeah, and I don't like I don't I don't mean like okay. It's like we've we've all showed up like without our dice yeah. sometimes. Like I I've done that before where like I I have my gaming go bag, mm-hmm. you know, and I thought my dice were in my go bag. And for some reason, I, they are not in there. Or you grab the, or in your gaming go bag, you had yourself set up for Shadowrun, and this is D and D, and you're like, crap. Oh crap! I've got, I've got, I've got a bazillion D six, but I don't have a single D twenty. Right, or D ten, and we're playing D ten. Yeah, I've, I've done that before. You I did that for seven my, my regular dice, I didn't, I didn't have more than two D ten on. Yeah, me, you know, yeah. and that's a problem. Right, but, right. But I had dice at mm-hmm. least, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and like that's happened before. That's fine. Like once in a while, if it happens, that's that's okay. Like no dice is probably the most forgivable thing on this list. No pencil. Same. Okay. Thing. Same thing. Whatever. I always keep a box of pencils. Whatever. Sure. Who uses pencils? We're living in the digital age. In most cases, yeah. Cool. Um, and we're also using D and D Beyond up until very recently too. So pencils were kind of. Uh... But I mean, I mean, there's still plenty of other games out there that require a lot of paper. Sure. I'm just saying is that pencils are for sure very for low definitely... down on the forgivable list. Yeah. Oh, completely. Where's your character sheet? Oh my god, it's that one right there. Like stabs me. It's and... so rare. It does happen very rarely, but like man, if you show up without your character sheet, like why would you literally cannot play without it? The other part is I don't know where it is. I was looking for an hour before game for it. That's why I was running late. I don't have it. I think I remember what my character was like. That that's the one that burns me the most. I'm just gobsmacked. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, not once, not twice. I've had this multiple times in multiple games. Oh my god! That's when I started taking the sheets from the players. Yeah, I make that a thing. You you know this? Yeah, I know that. When, when if there are sheets involved, you give them to me. Yeah, <laughs> I get your sheets I, at the end I, of every I, game. I may well do that since we're moving back to paper sheets. Sh- for Savage I ones. am flat out telling you, you should have a folder and keep it on your shelf with all your sheets in it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Right next to the book, just boom, right there. Um, another one, another one, and, and this is this is a personal sticking point for me. I don't mm-hmm. know if this is a this is a universal experience, but because I pay so much attention to the physical tools, minis, and terrain and stuff mm-hmm. like that, like if you are in possession of your own mini, you know that's an important part of my game. Mm-hmm. You know that's something I focus on mm-hmm. specifically as a storyteller. Mm-hmm. Why would you not bring it? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you know. 
like, please, this is an end. Like you keep character sheets. I keep everyone's minis. Yeah, no, I think you should. They're 100%. beautifully printed beautifully painted and you will never touch them unless it's game day <laughs> they are sitting on my shelf exactly where i know where they all are yeah. and they're all in the same case yep yep so yeah that's that's a big thing but what i really want to talk about oh, the one the one that actually made this show the one yep. the one that actually was was the root of this show mm-hmm. players <laughs> the sigh that's a good you every time. Do you understand that, like, there is a burden on you to know the rules of the game that we're playing? Because, and this, like, this is, this is 25 years worth. This is not my, necessarily my current group talking. Mm-hmm. We've, we've had discussions about it in my current group. Mm-hmm. And, and we've, we've had, like, tutorial sessions mm-hmm. where I had a couple players who said, I'm not comfortable with the rules for my character. I don't feel like I know what is going on. And my offer was, do you want me to run a tutorial session for you? It's not a role-playing session. It's not in canon or anything like that. It's not going to advance the story. But we'll run through some scenarios where your character will, you know, have, like, sparring combat, basically. And you'll learn the rules in certain situations. They went, yeah. And those two players knew the rules for their characters after that. And it was wonderful that we had that time together. So, if you're listening to me ranting about this rules thing, I am not aiming this at you too. No. Because you took the steps to learn them and correct this correct this that's this particular issue. For 25 years though. <sighs> players have been showing up to my games mm-hmm. and like not knowing how to roll a skill roll. Yeah. You know like do I roll a d20 for this one too? Well, I don't know. It's the d20 system. You tell me. <laughs> You know, we're playing yeah. D&D 3.5, known as the D20 system. Maybe. Maybe. You know? Mm-hmm. Literally every roll in this game is roll a D20, add whatever modifier you're trying to roll for, right. and see if that exceeds a target number. Yep. We are 10 game sessions in, and you have not figured this out yet. Yeah. I had a situation, um, and this was years ago, where... A player was like, "Well, what's what's the rules for for this for this obscure situation, right. S- semi obscure situation?" And I basically quoted it verbatim out of the book, yeah, off the top of my head. And I said, "I think it's I think it's around like page fifty or something of that in the DM's guide." Mm-hmm. And they were like, "Holy crap! Do you like just read the rules every night before you go to bed?" And I went, "Yeah," and I meant it mm-hmm. because sitting next to my bed was the player's handbook. And the Dungeon Master's Guide. Yeah. And and it wouldn't be like the whole rule book. Don't get me wrong. Like, no. And I wasn't reading through it like from cover to cover or anything yep. like that. But it was just every night before I went to bed, I would just look up a rule. And I would just read it. You know? Something in the DM's Guide. Something I was questioning myself of like washing dishes earlier in that day. I'm like, I am not, not feeling familiar with how, you know, how grapple checks are actually done. I should look that up tonight. And I do. Yeah. You know? I often do that as a player. Mm -hmm. Like, if something happens in a game session, I'll be like, I need to look that up. Like, because I don't understand that. Yeah. But I would, but I would learn the rules Mm -hmm. little by little so that when situations like that came up, like, I'm going to grapple the guy. Okay. I know exactly how this works because I studied it two nights ago, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, even some nights when, like, I would retire early for the evening. Maybe Mm -hmm. I will read more. Maybe I'll spend an hour pouring over that book. But the point is, is that as a storyteller, I'm putting in the work to learn the rules. I need to know all of the rules so that I can adjudicate the game for you guys and make it smooth mm-hmm. so that the game doesn't have hiccups. We don't have to stop and pick up a rule book. Right. Okay. That does not mean as a player, you don't have to know the rules and you can just look at Sarah and say, what do I do for this? Or what do I do for that? Every single session, especially with specifics to a specific class. Like, when I was running uh, 7C years mm-hmm. ago, um, classes are very specific. Like not, they're not classes, they're, they're countries. Um, and they have very specific rules for sword play and things like that. Now, yeah, there's some yeah. generalities to it, but it has to come down to the bonuses you get based upon certain conditions. Sure. And it's, it's very important that players understand how 
that combat work, especially for dueling. Dueling is one of the hardest parts. Of oh yeah, C. yeah, yeah. But your short schools are stuff like uh, like if you're fighting multiple opponents, you get Correct. bonuses. But with this other school, if you're fighting one big opponent and you're using a two handed sword, right, you get this sort of thing. Or yeah. or your whole point is that you use tagging to bring down the difficulty to make a proper strike. Right. You know, right, there, right, right. there's points to doing something. And I literally had a player who was a heavy fencer who was using a school. And they were like, I don't, I, I, they were just frustrated every game and mm-hmm. asking me questions every time. And I'm like, have you even read anything about this school? And they're like, well, it was using the weapons that I wanted to use. And I'm like, D- for what reason? So you, you took an entire batch of rules, yeah. made them the main focus of your character, and then yep. didn't read the rules. Correct. You just you just saw you just saw two weapon fighting and went okay cool. And this was multiple sessions in. Yeah. Um, I had another player in a different game that got really upset about firearms uh-huh. because they ignored the single rule that's in the firearm section about how long it takes to reload. Oh man, that's that's exactly why I stacked that stat on my character. Yep. yep. Because and, it takes up to a full minute to reload one of these things. Right, and there's not a ton of rules really in the 7C book. Yeah. It's actually pretty simple to get through. Character free- creation's the hardest part. It's pretty free for him, yeah. yeah. But if you if you look up your character, you can read through in usually two pages anything that's complex about your character mm-hmm. within about two pages. Yeah. And it was just like pulling teeth to get them to read a single page. Mm-hmm. I'd hand PDF sheets out. Oh yeah. For people like here's all of your power sets for your magic. And I would still get the same thing of, like, four sessions in, like, uh, you know, like, what are you going to do with your power? Uh, well, um, I want to do this, so what would I use to do that? Okay, well, first off, that's not how your power works. And second off, if you wanted to do something even remotely like that, again, you should know this. We're right. in session 17 of the campaign. Right. And you've been using this power all along. Why are you asking me to explain it to right. you? And that's that's the part yeah. that gets me. And I, I so I feel for where you're at with this. I think there are certain games that make it challenging. Like to a degree, Shadowrun has a lot of rules. Oh in it. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. there is nothing stopping you from learning your specific character's mechanics. Yeah, you don't need to know how shamans work or how how how, how decking works or anything right. like that. If you're a rigger, read the rules for rigging. Read yeah. the rules for drones. Read yep. the rules for vehicles. That's all you need to know. Or ask for help and then make some freaking notes. Yeah, make some notes. Make some cheat cards for yourself. Cheat yeah. cards are wonderful. Yeah. You know, but like, I don't know. I, I think I'm, it's just it's just going to... I'll be straight up. It's going to break my heart Like if we, if, if, if we go into Savage Worlds and I have to teach everyone how to play that game. And I understand to a certain extent it's our first game. I think after like, session zero and even to a degree session one, depending on what gets used, but I think it's going to be different just because there are so many less roles. Yeah. So many less. So many less. Like, like the, the core roles of that game are like uh, two sentences long. Yeah. And, and I think that's going to be the difference because I think the problem with things like D&D and Shadowrun mm-hmm. um, – I mean, I'll put Battletech out there even as well. Sure. Um, and definitely D&D is that Session Zero does not expose all of the rules for your character. Mm-hmm. There is no way that in a Session Zero, unless you're a ridiculous DM, mm-hmm. that you can do a proper tutorial, combat, social, whatever engagement. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. that your bard gets to charm, inspire, your fighter gets to attack and command I, that your cleric gets to heal, resurrect, you know, whatever. Yeah, no, no. I, I look. I expect all of that stuff to come with time. Like, I don't, I don't need everybody to know the exact nuance of their characters and stuff of like that on, mm-hmm. on session one. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, though, is that if I show up on my next game and I say roll a notice check, and any player goes, okay, how? I, I I'm going to need to take a walk. <laughs> Again, cheat sheets are going to be a huge part of that because. Yeah. You did hand out the books. They are in PDF format. And a good reminder is, we're having our session zero. Please make sure you read through this page and this page for the basic rules. And leave it at that. Yeah, exactly. But now we we both completely understand how any professor feels. Yeah. (laughs) You didn't even study for the test. Yeah. Yeah. Did we... I said we were going to be going over this in class. Did you read the assigned pages? Mm -hmm. No. 
get out. Go read the assigned pages. Yep. Yep. And add this to it, because next week we're going to be doing that discussion. And, and like, I, I'm, I'll, I'll kind of take the positive twist on this, too. Like, it, it makes me proud yeah. when players do lean into their mechanics without me having to ha- hold their hand. Yeah. And, I mean, maybe maybe that's an indication of kind of how low the bar has gotten for, you know, for, for pleasing me, is that if you if you do know the rules to your play, to your character, like, that I'm just overjoyed that I, I don't have to, you know teach you those sort of things i don't think it's that i don't think it's that the bar is low i don't think you should ever think that the bar is low everyone's different everyone's heart is different that's that's fair that's the, fair there is no bar to success like because if you had somebody sit down at your game who brought a completely completed character mm-hmm. with 20 questions filled out and handed to you including three plot hooks for their character ready to go sat down and on session zero knew everything was just rolling with the game and having a great role play. Are they now the God in your eyes of uh, the golden child for every character or every player that should sit at your table? I mean, kind of right. But are you really going to create a scale in your head? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm like ranking my players or anything like that. I'm just, I'm just saying is that there's, you should always be happy when your players bring anything from as little as a bag of Doritos. I don't know. I just I, f- I feel like I feel like it should be more of a rule than an exception that a player at my table knows how to use their character effectively. And this is why we're having this show. Is That's, that what's the player's burden? What's what and is the player's, player's simple burden, exactly. burden? Is know the rules. This yeah. is this is not random uh, game tabletop game night mm-hmm. where you don't know what you're playing and everyone's going to learn the rules to the game at the same time. Right, 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 right. You know. But on the other hand, if you're going to meet up with a, a group of five people playing Risk 2025, mm-hmm. and it's going to be a tournament that lasts two days, you damn better know the rules stepping yeah, into that. Exactly. Because they're going to look at you and go, why are you here? Mm-hmm. Well, I just wanted to hang out with my friends. Okay, well, you can hang out over there. Someone else is going to take your position. You know, that's that's how that would go because they're expecting to play a, ta- a long game. So, But I guess I guess my point is, though, is that if, 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 we, if we do see you put in that prep, you know, if you do show up with a, with a, with a character backstory or you do, you know, in, in, a, in a turn of combat go, okay, I'm going to use this special ability my character has to combo with this other special ability and help this other person do this other thing and it will combo into this effect. Man, I'm going to be wiping a tear out of my eye. There you go. I'm so proud of you for knowing how to effectively use your character. And yeah, and you've had definitely had those roles. I think with almost everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Which is great. Absolutely, I'm so. I'm proud of all of my players. Yeah, but you know, sometimes it was a little ride getting there. You know. So I'm going to go into one other thing. Yeah. <clears throat> for unprepared players, I am going to step away and say, beyond the game, prepare yourself. Yes. I've had. I remember. After high school, having games where people would come not showered Mm -hmm. uh, or not fed Mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, not bringing something to drink and would, like, either raid whatever was there or leave. Like, we'd take a five-minute break and they would just jump in a car and take off to go get food and take 20 minutes to a half an hour and come back and be like, oh, I had to get food. You're like... You, you could have warned us at some point. Right, right. Like everybody right. else got here. We were planning on playing until 6, and you just burned 45 minutes while you were gone. Mm-hmm. You guys could have started without me. No, we were literally in a combat session. No, we couldn't. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of a thing. And so uh, that kind of stuff burns me the most. Or especially when people come unprepared physically. And I, I'm not even going to go into the whole mental stability of like what could happen before you even show up at the show you know sure, or anything sure, like that sure, sure. but just like the simple things of like you didn't have breakfast or lunch and now you're hangry during you, my game yeah right? and you don't know you're hangry you just got a headache and you're irritable and halfway into the game you're literally just spouting aggression at the entire table about minor issues yeah because you're ill-equipped to handle them as okay. an adult i think i think i mentioned this like last game or, or last uh, last podcast or, or the, the the show before that or something like that but i i remember um uh brendan lee mulligan of uh, dimension 20 uh saying something effective like i i noticed our party got more murder hobo-y yes the less we ate or the later into the night we played and <laughs> One hundred percent. I I do believe that if you're not watching your table, yeah, and you're running the game as a storyteller too long. You will watch them fade, and they will not recall the end of your game. Yeah, which is often a climax. You have to leave in an appropriate amount of time. Mm-hmm. 
and un- unless your all your players are gung ho and they're very excited and they want to keep going, yeah. and even then sometimes it's best to pull that back while the energy is high. Yeah, the the the, the problem I'm having is that uh, you know I I grew up in a day and age where our games were eight hour long all day sessions with a with a lunch break in the middle of them or dinner break or something. We were twenty once. Yeah, we were all twenty once, and but all that all that old habit is still ingrained in me. So like when I'm booking a day. 20 year old me is going like oh yeah it's gonna book eight hours worth of worth of story we'll take we'll get nope. a pizza in the middle of it no 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 a lot of us a lot of us are over the hill yeah and uh the an eight hour game session does not does not fly with a lot of us anymore no no like I, i'll tell you i even I, I my adrenaline will carry me through an eight hour session yeah but i go home and i hurt yeah no no physically totally i hurt there. from hunching over my books and stuff like that and yeah. just no, I it and it's a mental workout. Yeah. The entire thing is a mental workout. It's like driving for eight hours. Yeah, I'm almost useless the next day if mm-hmm. I if I if I burn an eight hour session. Yep. Because I just mentally I'm checked out, you know? Yeah. My voice is shot, my body hurts, like <laughs> <laughs> Knox just killing my what nachos. <laughs> that is one of the greatest quotes ever. What's that? <laughs> just kill him already. I want nachos. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> that is fantastic. Pretty much, yeah. I, I remember those moments like that where it was just like, dude, we're supposed to be on a lunch break an hour ago. Why mm-hmm. is this combat still going on? Yeah. 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 Definitely a thing. One of the one, I've, I've been listening to uh, another podcast mm-hmm. uh, called uh, Savage Interludes. Mm-hmm. It's all oh, about, yeah, running, yeah. Uh, about running Savage Worlds. Yeah. And uh, it's one of the things I'm, I'm kind of hoping this move um, goes to because, I mean, they, they do a lot of comparisons to D&D just because D&D is such a, such a prolific system out there. Oh, God, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of people make the same switch that I am from D&D to Savage Worlds. And I'm, I'm hoping that um, the, the, from what I understand, the combat goes a lot, a lot quicker in well, Savage Worlds. We kind of noticed that on the, the quick session you did. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and we were still stumbling through it in the dark. Someone was, someone was telling a story about a, um, uh, a combat they had, like, it was like 30 zombies and six PCs. Mm-hmm. It was like 36 models on the table. Yeah. And it combat lasted 45 minutes. God. Yeah. Yeah. I have had a quarter that number, and that combat exceeded two hours. Yeah. On, in playing D&D. No, without because, a doubt. Because D&D is a game of attrition and resource management. Yeah. Where Savage Worlds is fast, fun, furious, pulpy combat. Right. I mean, it. Th- I'll, I'll bring the same thing to you. Mordheim has f- what five to seven models? Uh, oh no, no, it's more than that. It's it's like up to fifteen. But okay, still, but per, still per side, right? Those games last days at times. I, I not Mordheim. Well, Mordheim can go pretty quick, but I Mordheim, I, Mordheim goes pretty quick because it's a small skirmish game, right. and you've got a route mechanic where you. Well, only that's need, true. That's you true. only need to topple like five or six of those models before the they, game's over. Before, before the game is over. On the um, other hand, forty k. <laughs> yeah, forty forty k though. Oh yeah, no, you're 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 there all day. Yeah, you're absolutely there all day. Yeah, I've I've watched combat actions from one side of a table take an hour. Uh huh. One side of the table, not even the full round. I can imagine with like something like Tyranids where you've got a swarm army. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like a thir- like I said, thirty six models in a in a in a in a uh, a tabletop role playing game combat took forty five minutes. So yeah. I'm hoping our like overall the game will be faster paced. No, I I think that'll be great. I mean, remember how paced Seven uh, C combat was. Yeah. It was pretty quick. I mean, our combat could take longer when we got very descriptive. Yeah, but I always remember, yeah, was was pretty decently quick because, like, the... the um... Brutes just drop. Yeah, the Brutes mechanic. Yep, That's Brutes what I was mechanic to just drops. I was thinking henchmen, but yeah. The, yeah. The, I mean, the you brutes, guys right? were dropping 15 to 20 Brutes at a time uh-huh. in, in good combat rounds and moving things on. And you had fear, you had taunts, you had all kinds of stuff that could go into it to shift it. A lot of times you'd move out of the scene. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't just combat. It was scene to scene to scene and, yeah. and action to action to action. So that's what I liked about it. And I kind of feel that's where Savage Worlds is going to go for you. I'm, I'm hoping. I'm so. hoping. So hopefully that the whole the whole players are hangry thing. Even if it does happen, mm-hmm. it ain't gonna be so much of an issue. It's I think I think we've more or less addressed that though in our in our group though. Oh, very much. We've so. we've kind of got a like all right, everybody snacks is a thing, you know. Yeah. yeah. Eat before you come, and snacks are a thing. Yeah, yeah. Prepare, um, prepare for snackage. Yeah. Um. Interruptions. Interruptions. Yep. Interruptions and distractions. Um. For me, I 
I had a bigger problem before when technology started to come to the table. Yeah, yeah. People would bring laptops or people would bring, um, you know, uh, early devices. Mm -hmm. Um, It always felt like they were a distraction. Mm -hmm. And it's only become more so. Now, granted, I do agree that there are times when, and I've discovered this as we've learned about people who've, uh, who do have other, um, uh, I, I guess, mental condition awareness? Yeah. Where yeah, yeah. somebody needs to fidget. Somebody, they're they're not really losing focus, but they have to do something, yep. or they will lose focus. Yeah. And that took me a while to get over that, but it doesn't excuse straight up distraction. Yes, agreed. Um, I w- I was in one game that I literally had to call out another player in. Mm-hmm. Because they were playing another game while playing our game digitally. Yeah. So we were all sitting at a table together. Uh They had their tablet up in front of them. And they're literally playing another RPG with another group digitally Mm -hmm. via text. And they were asking questions like, oh, I'm I'm sorry, I'm not sure what was going on. I, I couldn't hear. It's because we were talking directly to you about the scene. Mm -hmm. And that happened again and again. Eventually, I'm like, dude, stop it. Yeah. Not only did you, were you playing it, but you were talking to the person next to you about what you were doing in that game. Right, right. Like, that's just messed up. Yeah. That is straight up messed up at that point. You're, you are creating your own distraction and being exceptionally disrespectful. Yeah, yeah. So, like, that that if, right if, there if burns. If you're going to show up to a game, focus on the game. Whatever you need to do to focus on that game, right. that's fine. Like, yeah. I, I, uh, like I, I know we, we have a, a player in our group that, mm-hmm. like you said, it kind of, kind of needs to fidget. Sure. Um, and so this particular player has, like, just a simple color match game mm-hmm. on, on their tablet that will uh, – that the, they'll, they'll poke them out occasionally between turns. But mm-hmm. they're, they're there. They're yeah. present. And, and they're active. Right, but if they just try to focus on the game, they're gonna. It's gonna be. It's what's. It's too mundane, and it will. They'll. 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 They'll drift. They'll drift. Yeah. Yeah. And then we will lose them. Yeah, one hundred percent. And we've seen it because they've 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 done other things like gotten up, started cleaning, doing yeah. you know doing organizing, and then they because of that they lose pieces of the game. Yeah. But keeping them at yep. the table is half of the battle. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's a that's an accommodation that you have to make as a DM to understand that that's what's going sure, on. Sure, sure. Um, and look, every every player is different. Every player's mm-hmm. got different needs, and I and I understand that. But like, like like you said though, you know, if if you're whole out, you know, playing a whole different game, mm-hmm. that, then you're there's no excuse for that. That's no. that's that's creating your own distraction and then complaining that you're distracted. You exactly. Know? Exactly. Which also is like having conversations with people meta outside of the game. Yeah. While the well obvious important thing well while the game is in progress. Right. Right. Like, right, right. Right. If I'm literally having a conversation with you about a TV show, plot exposition is happening, and I'm showing you funny memes on Tumblr. Right. Or somebody across the table is literally having an open character to storyteller NPC conversation that you're in the room for. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, and you're having a side conversation or showing something off or looking up stupid things and something happens and you go, oh, what just happened? That should be your own awareness, not anyone else's. You shouldn't get defensive at that point. Yeah. That's a, and, and Knox makes a good point. This show is called self-awareness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, that's really the theme here. It is. Yeah, it really is. You know, you need to be aware. That's one of your burdens as a player is the moment that you realize you've checked out, you need to be checking yourself back in. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. As right. As the kids say. Right. Uh, let's see here. Energy levels and attitude. We've kind of gone over that a little bit. Um. Yeah, a little bit. Um. I... We've had, you know, if you know you're going to be spending your next day, um, or at least part of your next day at a at a, a game session, like, um, I've had players show up, like, uh, hungover because oh, they were out yeah. drinking all night before. Yep. Or even if they weren't hungover, but just, like, absolutely knackered, you know, um, oh, I got three hours of sleep because I went to bed at, at, you know, four in the morning because I was playing CSGO with my friends or whatever. And you're like... You knew you had game today. Yeah. You know, and you sh- you show up half asleep, uh, had one player fall asleep. 
Oh, dude. During the game? I've had more than one player fall asleep during games. Yeah. Uh, that was not... This isn't that somebody was, who has was, narcolepsy was... or sickness or anything else. They just passed out. Yeah. 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 And just, oh, yeah, I just, didn't, I just didn't sleep well last night. I was just up doing this other stuff. Like, oh, okay. Like, man, like, if you need to stay home and, like, fall asleep or something like that, that like, that's okay. I understand if you've got a problem you need to address or whatever, like... I've, Be I've I've called off sick to your games before. You definitely have. Um, you know, and and that's understandable. Like you you can't plan when you have a maybe a night of even in even if you're not sick, like a night of insomnia or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I know we've we've got at least one mutual friend who is a uh, terrible insomniac. Yes. Um, and we know this because we see messages from them on Discord at like three thirty in the morning, and we're like, oh. One of those nights again. I'm so sorry, friend. Friend. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I I get that, mm-hmm. but like, if you can't stay awake, just like call off if you need to stay home. You yeah. Know? That's be, that's be honest. We understand. It's it's fine. Uh, it's it's gonna suck. I'll be salty mm-hmm. about it, but mm-hmm. we'll reschedule. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not gonna place any blame on you. I'll be salty about the situation. I'm not gonna be salty at you. Right. Right. You know, but like, don't show up and then just zonk out on the couch. Or worse yet be a turd at the table oh yeah that's yeah. The, when you're a stinky turd at the table w- literally ruining everyone else's fun you're like why why are you being a jackass like oh i didn't get any sleep last night okay, okay like, well that, that sounds like a you problem not an us problem right why don't you temper yourself a little bit right i mean it's the it's the uh snickers commercial yeah it literally is a like snickers commercial where there's an expectation that you're going to somehow make it better by giving them a snickers yeah, exactly. Like, you know, here, Genghis Khan, have a Snickers. You're a real tyrant when you don't eat. Right. Like, <laughs> okay, let's 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 not do that to the other people at your table. Yeah. So, yeah. I think what this all wraps up in my head to be is that, I'll, and, and I didn't really realize it until we started getting into writing for this, mm-hmm. was that what we're really talking about is a lot of people even myself included uh, to a degree, started our social lives in gaming. We didn't start it by going to parties. We didn't start it by, you know, uh, by meeting other people. We didn't start it by, you know, following our parents to their specialty events and following in their footsteps of how we should be socially inactive. Yeah, you're right. So there was no one there to check us. We just accepted that that was how... Gaming culture was, you well, know. well, not even gaming culture, but this is how our social culture was. And yeah, as time okay. progressed, some of it became acceptable to some people because, again, they weren't checked on it. Mm-hmm. They weren't told that that was improper. So we have a society that we have, you know, we've, <laughs> we've built a place where crime is the only way to gather things. And then we punish those who commit the crimes. Yes. Yes. Um... I see where you're going with that, yeah. I, I kind of feel that that's where this rant has led to in my mind in saying, so c- coming back to storytellers mm-hmm. and players, if you're new and you're just getting into this and you're just connecting or you're just running a game, teach good social practices with each other. Yeah. Check each other on the soft side. Don't Don't wait till it's seven sessions in and the person's constantly doing it. Like... Check those things a little earlier, mm-hmm. but be friendly about it. Be Tell them that this is better, and in the end, they'll be better people for it. Communication is the key. It always has been. Yeah. But yeah. we all just need to be a little bit better about investing in each other and investing in ourselves. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, being self-aware. I mean, Knox said it. It's true. You know, check yourself before you wreck yourself, but... it's it's a It's a group activity. And that means that everybody needs to contribute to it. And whether that shows up in knowing at least your little corner of the rules or bringing your little corner of your gaming supplies. Yeah. Or just having having made sure that your corner of eating and showering and such like that are are, are taken care of. You yeah. can't account for everybody else at the table, but you can do your part. Yeah, exactly. You know, as long as you can take care of your own stuff and make sure that your contributions are done and not placing those burdens on other people, mm-hmm. if everybody does that, then the whole group prospers for it. 100%. You 100%. Know? We're we're just saying help each other and help your let your 
like help your GM or storyteller mm-hmm. help you. And I, I think, yeah, I mean, I mean, on top of let us, you know, help us help you, it's, I think you're going to be, you know, really surprised if like you put in these little bits of effort, what you get back out of the game, mm-hmm. you know, just, just learning the rules for, like I said, you don't have to know all the rules in the game. I don't need you to read the entire book cover to cover three times and memorize right. everything, but just knowing how your edges work or your feats right. work or your class features work, yep. you know, so that when your turn comes around, you can say, all right, I'm going to do this thing, which works like this, mm-hmm. and that's going to combo into this and it's going to have this effect. Right. I roll these dice to see if it works. Right. And, and you could even ask, am I right? And then we were like, yeah, and like, that's I perfect. I guarantee, I guarantee if you do that, your storyteller's going to look at you and go like, holy yeah. crap, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's great. That's yes, great. amazing. Yeah. Do, that. do that. I am so yeah. into this. Yes, yes. It helps us be excited for you. Exactly. And and you'll have more fun because like you're doing something cool and interesting. I mean, how many times have you looked at your character sheet and thought to yourself, I don't know how to use half of this, mm-hmm. so I'm just going to attack. That's... And and that's it. That's that's the whole thing. I'm just going to attack. Yeah. Okay. But but you've got so many cool other abilities you could yeah. be using. How much more fun would you have? Right. If you were using them. Yep. And knew how to use them. Yep. You know? Yeah. So and when you start having fun, everybody starts having fun. Yeah. I want to hit some of these questions. Yeah. Because we're running out of time. Yeah. yeah. All right. So Overwatch says, uh, "When are the rules not the rules?" Are there any behaviors you can think of that would be absolute no-goes at the table, but fine in a typical social situation? If so, how do you convey that to folks new to gaming? I think the social faux pas, I think the biggest one for me is the social faux pas of not preparing. And and some of that is the, like, it's okay to be a little late to some social events. Yeah. It's yeah. okay to be, to, to not know, you know, everything that's going on. But literally, if you, if, if it's a wedding and you show up in jeans and a t-shirt mm-hmm. because you didn't check to see what kind of a wedding it was. Right, right. Yeah. Um, that kind of a thing follows in the same line where, where it might not, you know, where it equals, but I'm trying to think of a social situation where something is acceptable socially. And the only thing I can think of is tardiness. Tardiness is kind of socially acceptable. Or or ducking out early. Yeah. Um, that sort of thing. Like, you know, Hey guys, uh, we showed up to the party for 45 minutes. We said our highs, we said our goodbyes. Uh, we're going to, we're going to dip out. We got something else going on tonight. Like fine at a party. Yeah. Not fine at a, at, a, at, a, at a game. No. You know? And I think to a definite degree that in some cases it's not fine at a party. Like in the case, like if someone is throwing a special event, I'll throw together a term here. Uh, if someone's throwing a baby shower, mm-hmm. you know, kind of a thing, and you show up, drop off a gift, and duck out, they shelled out money for food, entertainment, all kinds of shit hey. to make sure that you have a good time and thank you for coming and bringing a gift, and you just duck out. Yeah. Weddings, I mean, wedding receptions are for the guests, not for the bride and groom. That's fair. I guess I guess if you RSVP'd and was like, I'll have the fish, mm-hmm. and then you don't stay for the meal. Dude, yeah. straight up, if you, if you say you're coming to a wedding and mm-hmm. no show, yeah. I'm sorry, I got married. I did not eat all the food or drink all the drink at my wedding. I didn't even have half of it. I think I had half a plate and a glass of wine. Mm-hmm. Not even the wine I made for people. Yeah. Now, people came to my wedding. Yeah. I, I, I had extras. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I know. But I've been... I shot weddings where people would just not show up. Tables full of people. And I'm thinking, that's like 30 bucks a plate. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, what, does it, and what does it say to the bride and groom? Uh, completely. Yeah. Completely. So that that's where I would say. That's where I would say. Like the only, the only counter argument I can think is like I, I I understand as a terminal introvert myself. Like how like sometimes you get into a social situation and you're like mm, this is too much. This is way too much. I, I understand. Can't be here. Yeah. But again, that should be the exception, not the rule. You yeah. know. And yeah. and don't 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 commit to something you can't. Right. You can't do. All right. 
All right. Uh, so Knox in the Box asks, uh, did do you ever delegate smaller tasks, uh, DM or otherwise, uh, to your players in an attempt to keep them a bit more focused and less likely to become bored and disruptive? For example, uh, and this is, uh, I believe, in the game that, uh, that Sean was running for us, I always did the note-taking and inventory tracking. Sarah would draw the maps and place minis. Somebody else might track initiative and health. Do you find that having out of game roles to be con- uh, to be conducive to teamwork and communal role play? Hundred percent, based on the system. Yeah, and and the team, honestly. Uh, yeah, I I think I don't think I did much of that with with Dungeons and Dragons. No, um, I because I am a bit of a control freak about this sort of stuff, but mm-hmm. I think. Like, especially with Savage Worlds, I see a lot of opportunities. In fact, like, uh, in f- I was listening to another po- the, yep. the podcast, Savage Interludes. They were actually talking with this exact topic mm-hmm. um, of, like, you use a deck of cards for initiative. Have somebody else deal them. Mm-hmm. Um, and when somebody uh, somebody uh, throws a joker, have somebody else shuffle them for you and give them a Benny for it. There you go. You know? I, I, I agree with that. I think in things like um, Battletech as a game is uh-huh. challenging. It's it's easy to lose track of where you are. Having someone keep track of that is fantastic. Yes. yes uh, Shadowrun was another game where a lot can be going on and you can quickly lose track of where you're at. Again. Just having another pair of eyes on the yep. initiative order or having yep. another pair of eyes on how many hit points somebody has or, left. Or, or, or what, like who's still up, you know? Uh, somebody, uh, I, I, I heard a DM... Uh, uh, for Dungeons and Dragons was actually saying he has his players track uh, the enemy hit points. And that's usually something that like a lot of DMs keep close to the vest. We don't even tell you like how many hit points they have left. But he said I, I, he found the exact opposite was true. Mm-hmm. Um, that giving them, okay, they have 127 hit points. Somebody track that for me. Yeah. Not only kept them involved, but everybody kind of had a better sense for the tactics and stuff like that. And they felt more involved instead of just... How many times do we have to wh- whack this vague bag full of hit points because before you, it falls down? Because you can't down? see the blood. You can't see the gore. You have no idea exactly. it's injuries. It's just all assumed. But if you're looking at 37 of 127, you know exactly where it's at. Yep. No, I think that's perfect, and I, I honestly think that should carry through. Yeah. I may start doing that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, the Mad Elf asks, oh, we still have a little bit of time here. What are your tips and advice for leveraging experienced players at your table to help bring new folks up to speed without burdening the players? Um, I mean, just, uh, it's always useful to have a rules lawyer at the table, mm-hmm. if, if that's what you're talking about. Um, are you talking about bring them up to speed with the story? Or are you talking about, like, bring I think mechanics. With the, with the mechanics. Yeah. I think it's mechanics. I think based on the system, um, like one of the things that I like doing mm-hmm. is uh, positioning. At the table, yeah, I'll make sure that I've got a semi-experienced player, or at least a player who knows how to pick up systems, mm-hmm. in between players who don't. Yeah, and I'll try and keep the players who who know the least closest to me. Yeah, yeah, I think that's good. I think that's good so advice. that so it's easier to work through situations as things get challenging. Mm-hmm. Um, but honestly, I I think leveraging them in the sense that, um, if they are willing to help, letting them help. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's probably the big thing is just making sure that they're okay being the helper at the right, table. Right. And m- most people I I I've found are. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, but most most gamers are always happy to show their knowledge of the of the rules and stuff like that and share that with other people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whether it's out of arrogance or out of altruism, I don't care. You're helping me with the rules. Exactly. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> exactly. So, um, but yeah, I I, I think I, I rarely have players who feel like it's a burden, and if that they do, they usually bring it up. Yep. So. All right, so next week's topic yeah. is going to be about player-assisted world building. This is um, outside of the rules or systems designed for it. Uh, so, like, for instance, uh, um, Powered by the Apocalypse oftentimes asks the players to contribute to the world building. We're not talking about that. We're talking about um, uh, just doing that in general, asking your players for input on the world building and how to, how to handle that as a storyteller. So you can find us on Twitter at ST underscore Conclave, on Instagram at ST underscore Conclave. Listen to us live every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on MixLR.com slash Storyteller dash Conclave. And join the discussion up on our Discord. Uh, we'd love to hear from you and uh, toss us some questions, especially. You can find that Discord link on our Twitter as well as our website, StorytellerConclave.com. We'd like to thank our patrons, especially our named members, Knox the Box, Sam, the Arcane Asylum, Spark of Motion, Veteran, and Hulavu. What you do for us every month helps us with every one of our shows. Our pre-music, <laughs> our pre-music today was by Arcane Anthems. You can find that at patreon.com slash arcane anthems. Our intro music, Beyond the Warriors, is by Geefrog. You can find that at 
geefrog.bandcamp.com or on Google Music. And our outro music, which you're hearing right now, is Only Our Footprints in the Sand by Mater Machine. You can find that at freemusicarchive.org. And a shout-out, as always, to our families. Vicky and Sean, thank you so much for your love and support. Thank you. All of our friends who've sat with us at our tables over the years. That we just ranted about. That we just (laughs) ranted about. We love you. We really do. That we just savagely excoriated. (laughs) Uh, We really do love you. And it's okay. And every single one of you, our listeners, we love you all so much. Love you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.